As promised, this next topic has nothing to do with what we just did, implicit differentiation. It does have something to do with something we did earlier this semester. So at home, raise your hand when you think you know what that is. Here's an example. At 7 o'clock in the evening, there's 8 inches of snow on the ground, and snow is falling at a rate of 1.5 inches per hour. We would like to estimate the amount of snow there will be on the ground at 9 p.m. So usually when I do this with people in the room, I give everybody about 30 seconds to think about what they would answer. And we all generally have come up with the same answer. So let's see if you at home are also going to come up with the same answer here. Let's try. So let's suppose that I give a name, f of t, to the amount of snow on the ground at time t. We're trying to estimate f of 9. Did I guess your answer correctly? I hope you got 11. Let's reconstruct how you got 11 for your answer. I'm guessing that you said, well, there was already 8 inches of snow on the ground, and the snow was falling at a rate of 1.5 inches per hour, and it was going to fall at that rate for another 2 hours. And from that, you got 11. Is that what you did at home? Let's translate this into something more symbolic in terms of f here. This 8 was f of what? That was f of 7. That was the amount on the ground at 7 p.m. <clears throat> this 1.5 was what in the language of calculus? It's a rate, right? And calculus rates are derivatives. So this was saying f prime of 7. And then how did you get the number 2? You said, well, it's 7 o'clock now. We're going to look two hours into the future. And I assume you got that by doing 9 minus 7. So when did we do problems like this before? I hope this reminds you of the problems that we did in week four. We had one problem about a metal bar that was expanding. We knew how long it was at a certain temperature. We knew how quickly it was expanding. We looked ahead a few degrees to guess what its length would be with an increase of some number of degrees. We did a similar problem with uh, gas mileage. So this is that exact same idea, but now that we have our derivative rules, we can uh, apply this to a wider variety of functions. So what this is called is local linearization. So let's talk about why it's given that name. Linearization is because what are you assuming is true about the rate over the next number of hours or number of minutes or number of degrees in those old examples? You're assuming the rate stays the same, meaning that the slope stays the same, so that we're pretending that it's a linear function. We don't know it's a linear function. That's why we're writing these approximating symbols and we're saying the word estimate here, right? We don't know that it's linear. We're just making the best estimate that we can. And why is it called local? Because it seems reasonable to estimate the amount of snow two hours in the future. It would not seem reasonable to estimate the, number of, the amount of snow two weeks in the future, right? It would, at least around where we live here in Cambridge, we do not expect it to snow at a rate of 1.5 inches an hour for two weeks. That would be unprecedented during our lifetimes or during recorded history. here. So local, there's no official definition of what local is. You just have to use your own judgment. Two hours here seems OK. Two weeks is clearly not OK for this sort of example. So the local linearization or tangent line approximation, because what you're really doing is drawing the tangent line at this point, uh, the point when x is 7, y is 8. You're drawing the tangent line there at a slope of 1.5 for a function y equals f of x. And then people use a different, uh, diff a variety of uh, prepositions, is that what these are called? At, sometimes they say at, sometimes they say near, sometimes they say about. A point x equals a is given by this formula. So let's reconstruct what it is here. f of x, x is the unknown in the future, in this case 9. a is the point where the thing is known. So in this case we had 7. Here it's f of a. That's how much snow we have now, or how long the metal bar is now. Plus f prime of a, that's ha how fast it is snowing now at the time we know, times x minus a, how far into the future we're going to look. And this is the formula for local linearization. And after this, we're going to do a couple of examples to use this uh, to approximate some functions. 